Live from the Echo Hotel and Suites, Victoria Island, Lagos, Nigeria, you are watching CNTV and we're bringing to you the Information Communication and Telecommunication Expo 2017, ICTEL. Time for us to commence the second session for today. I hope you're all having a great time at this year's 2017 ICTEL conference so far. It's been quite informative and um, I'm sure you've had a lot to learn and see. This session will be looking at education. Uh, it's the theme for this session is a deep dive into connected school challenges, opportunities, and hurdles, and it's powered by Samsung Electronics West Africa. Before I, int before I introduce uh, members of the panel, I'd like to call on uh, manage the B2B manager education for Samsung. His name is Mr. Matthew Iwundu. He will start with a product unveil before we commence with this session. Can we have a round of applause for him, please? Good afternoon. My name is Matthew Iwundu. I oversee the education sector in Nigeria. I will be discussing the Samsung Education Smart Program. And um, we'll be looking at how it can help us um, achieve economic development. So in the course of my presentation, we'll be seeing current realities, our capabilities, our value proposition, and then the questions and answers will be taken through the panel section. Whenever we talk about Samsung, a lot of things come to mind. In Nigeria, people think about the smartphones, home appliances. But we'll have over 80 companies in the group. We'll have Samsung Electronics that we know as one of the companies will have the construction arm that built the Burj Khalifa in Dubai. We'll have the ship building arm that built ships. In 2016, the federal government sent some Nigerians to be trained on ship building and maintenance. We're into hospitality, automobile, medicals, insurance. We do a lot of things that span across major industries. In Samsung, we believe that a troubled education system will give rise to a troubled economy. We took out time to examine our education system. And we discovered the following. Teachers' capabilities are low. Curriculum implementation is very complex. Students' morale to education is low. Exam pass rates is also low. In 2014, WAIEC, the result they produced, showed that 61.32% of people that took math and English failed. Between 2006 and 2015, the pass rate has been between 22% and 29%. In 2014, UNICEF, said that there are 10.5 million out-of-school children in Nigeria. This is a nation of people. There are countries that are not up to 10 million people, but we'll have 10.5 million out-of-school children in Nigeria. And out of the world's out-of-school um, children, Nigeria accounts for 47%, which is very high. Again, do we have the will, the willingness to actually develop our education sector? 
we have UBEC, Universal Basic Education Commission, that is saddled with the responsibility of developing basic and secondary education. In 2016, they had 66 billion naira fund to be assessed by the various state governments. It was only Nasarawa State and Brono State that assessed this fund. Even though there is counterpart funding involved, the question is, what are the other states doing? I like telling this story, the South Korean story of rag to riches story of the Koreans. We are just seven years older than these people. Sorry, seven years younger than these people. We know that in 1953, the Korean economy was destroyed by the Korean War. But by 1986, they started investing heavily in child education. And that is the only way we can develop in this country. Between 1986 and 2012, their economy grew tenfold from $100 billion economy size to $1.1 trillion. They did a study to understand why this happened, and they discovered it's as a result of investment in child education. We also have to move from where we are today. We are focusing more on certificates. We all had the discussion in the last section. Certificates, entrance, um, competition. We we'll need to be doing more of creative education in Nigeria that will bring out the potentials of these kids. We also believe that a great education system will enable economic development. We looked at the best five countries with the best education system in the world. And there is a clear correlation between their economic development and their education system. UNESCO, UNESCO um, in 2014, 2015, they made an assumption that a country that wants to develop must at least allocate 26% of its annual budget to education. But in Nigeria, all we've had so far is between 5% and 9%. The highest I've seen so far is from Oyo State. I was in Oyo State last week with um, the state um, government executives. And um, they showed a lot of interest in what we are doing. If you look at the, the data we have there, even African countries, are, small African countries are allocating education budget more than we are doing in Nigeria until we realize the importance of this, we can make meaningful um, development. In any environment that we find ourselves, we don't work alone. Yesterday, the Honorable Minister was talking about local content. We work with local partners, Nigerian companies, to develop their capacities. We we'll, we'll do that by providing training for them. And we also work with other OEMs, the likes of HP, Microsoft, Oracle, and Co. We have also done a lot of projects in Nigeria, education-based projects in Nigeria. One of them is Kaduna State. In February this year, we delivered learning devices, 10,000 learning devices to Kaduna State government. And Governor Erofa is the first to adopt this at state level in Nigeria. We are working with some partners that are also looking for what these state governments are doing before they can provide some level of support. For instance, in Kaduna State, the governor paid for 5,000 devices. But we are working with some oil and gas companies, NMPC, Chevron, Total, um, mobile, napims, and they came to us and said, hey, what is it that you are doing in the education sector that we can support? And we mentioned Kaduna State, and they approached the governor, and he said, look at what I'm doing, but we don't have unlimited fund. 
They said, okay, you are doing 5K, but who can give you additional 5,000? Why are we doing mobile learning solution in Nigeria? We did this study to understand the lifestyle of the millennial kids. What interests them? How can they learn better? And we discovered the following, that 46% of them, like they spend uh, at least 10 hours daily on the internet. They are five times more likely to remember information when it's on video. 73% of them like technology. 52% are on social media. And there's hardly any of them that you see today that does not own one form of smart device or the other. And we said, why can't we make this part of their learning system that can make learning collaborative, interactive, would digitize textbooks so that they don't have to carry multiple textbooks to school. And we, pro we provided videos of all the subjects so that the convenience of their home, market, anywhere, they can click on a video that will teach them about a topic. The same le lecturer that is teaching them in school will be the same lecturer that will be teaching them on the tab. The key technologies that drive this we we'll have digitized textbooks, we we'll have virtual reality, we we'll have game wearables, game um, uh, cloud um, solutions, and so on. One of the things that this would do is to enhance efficient operation in a school system. It will also save the lecturers time. They don't have to sit down to do everything, setting up questions, doing uh, lesson notes. Everything is automated. It's on the tab. In terms of cheating, this will also eliminate cheating and bias in the school system. And the lecturer will be able to get instant feedback from the students. We are aware that these kids, when they go to the internet, they can assess harmful devices, content that can distract them. So we we'll have a solution that we we'll call Knox, Samsung Knox. It's a policy enforcer that will dictate or determine what the students can do with these devices. So this is purely a learning tool. It will whitelist what the students can do and blacklist what they can do. These are some of the projects that we have done in Nigeria. In 2013, we executed a project in Ekiti State who delivered 118,000 solar power netbook and 4,000 notebooks to teachers with educational content. We have two engineering academies in Nigeria, one in Lagos, one in Ekiti State. And what we do there is to impact students that require vocational skills around Samsung technologies. Um, we have also implemented, um, we have a digital village in Cross River State that is powered by solar uh, power, um, internet, solar power. And in that place, we have the classroom, we have a general ward, blood, ear, and nose clinic. Ordinarily, children and people from that area will never in their life have access to that kind of facility. They will want people both in the urban areas and in, in the rural areas to be able to use such facilities to learn and then access health um, care facility. We have also deployed some of these solutions in some universities in Nigeria. Covenant University is one. We delivered um, about 10,000 devices in Covenant University. Mountaintop University, they just started with us last year. We delivered about um, 600 devices. Um, Redeemer invested about 1,700. Babcock invested. They just started with 2,000 and have done an additional um, order for 8,500. We have uh, Unity School, Life Fort. These are some of the secondary schools that we are working with in Nigeria. We have River Bank at the back here. We have also invested in nine ICT labs in Nigeria. Um, one of them, I, I've talked about it before, Lagos, Ogun State, five in Niger Delta State, one in Imo State, one in Abuja. 
The one in Kaduna is still coming up. This was um, the handover ceremony that we did. The day we were um, um, delivering the, pro the project to Kaduna State Government. And those are the stakeholders, representatives from NAPIMS, ExxonMobil, Chevron, and so on. This was the day President Buhari commissioned um, the ICT lab in Ogun State. And while he was commissioning this, he made a statement. He said, he looked at uh, the Vice President of Sibaj and said, hey, if I were to be taught with this um, technology, I would have become a prof like you today. Sorry. So we have um, partners across the world. This, um, we have partnership with um, the British Council. Um, yearly, there's what we call Enterprise Challenge. The participants go through a screening program and they come for a boot camp. The best students, the first three, first two are sponsored to UK. They spend two weeks with Sir Richard Branson where he will tutor them personally on entrepreneurship. The third position winner either goes to Sam, Samsung um, head office in Korea or our regional head office in South Africa. In February, I took the third place winner to South Africa, and um, at the end of the program, we decided to make a trip to Nelson Mandela's house, where he was buried. And he was taught a lot about Nelson Mandela. And one of the things I took away from that trip is this. They showed us his burial place and asked us, what does RIP mean? We all said, rest in peace. And they said, no. It means return if possible. So I want to see a situation where a Nigerian leader will be told whether dead or alive, return if possible. Thank you.